From the heart of the jungle comes a savage cry of victory. This is Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. From the black core of dark Africa, land of enchantment, mystery, and violence, comes one of the most colorful figures of all time, transcribed from the immortal pen of Edgar Rice Burroughs, Tarzan, the bronze white son of the jungle. And now in the very words of Mr. Burroughs, the story of Tarzan and the missing element. Long ago, in appreciation of an invaluable service Tarzan had rendered them, the people of the Wakanori tribe had erected a cabin for his exclusive use and fitted it with native furniture of fine woods, animal pelts of incredible softness, and tribal ornaments of rich gold and costly gems. For unlike much of the jungle, the land of the Wakanori was bountiful, and its people desired to share their wealth with the lord of the jungle. Not often did Tarzan tarry in this home they had made for him, but now he had returned. Manu, you're going to sweep the whole floor away. It's only made of hard-baked clay. Besides, you've done quite enough for me. Much work to do yet. Manu, stay. (laughs) Seems that your Kitoto wants to go home. Tarzan, wake him up with man's noises. Oh, sorry. But he can't be too comfortable jiggling around on your back as you sweep. Now, if you'd take my advice and... No, go... Men of Wakanori build Hema for Tarzan. And Manu promised he always keep Hema clean. Even when Tarzan not here, Manu, Manu always... Manu, you made that vow when you were a very young child. Now you're grown. You have a fine husband and a lovely baby. And you have quite enough to do to take care of your own Hema. As soon as I brought some water from the reservoir, I shall have everything I need. There's no water in reservoir. What? But I passed it only a short time ago. It seemed as solid as the day I helped your tribe build it. And it's fed by a dozen jungle streams, so surely it couldn't have gone. Streams dry up. Only water left in village is small mouth in a river. But that water's not fit to drink. The red sun indicates many dry months ahead, and a severe drought could wipe out every animal and human in this entire portion of the great jungle. Dio Tarzan, chief of Wakanori, know that great bowl of rocks Tarzan built is dry. Try fine springs, not fine. Dig wells deep, not strike water. Well, then you must move your village to another part of the jungle, to, to the mountains north of here, perhaps. Tribe not move. Is heard of Lokemoku, witch doctor of Wakanori. But why should he be opposed to a track if the very life of your tribe depends upon it? We'll answer, Tarzan. Lokemoku. Is not witch doctor who makes laws, but gods of Wakanori tribe. They speak to Lokomoku. Say people of Wakanori stay and crawl where they live many years. Must obey word of God. Great chief, you know that I respect your people and your beliefs. I, I wear upon my wrist the ruby symbol of your gods, for I considered it an honor when you bestowed it upon me. But now I say that if your gods insist that you stay here to perish of thirst... You must turn against them. You must find new gods who will lead you away from a land of ruin. Blasphemer! First men of Wakanori who go against word of gods, pays with life, will be struck down by anger of gods he defies. Already a rumble of dissatisfaction was beginning to grow among the people, and the witch doctor finally agreed to appeal to his deities. Under cover of darkness, he left the village. But instead of heading for the temple deep in the jungle, he journeyed for a night and a day until he had reached a trading post within the shadows of the towering Miyazori Mountains. Trading post? It had suddenly begun to resemble a fortress. Raised platforms had been built for strategic gun locations. A crew of rough-looking miscreants had been imported to form a motley army. And a spiked fence of iron was being constructed around the entire stockade. Ah, uh, get that last piece of fencing into place, you lazy louse. I didn't have it carted 800 miles to let it get rusty while you loaf on the job. 
Oh, my friend, the voodoo spieler. I didn't see you sneak up. Locomoco, not sneak up. He... Okay, get off your high horse and come out inside. I don't want to talk in front of these yeggs. Nadio, it's better Locomoco and Buona Rudek hold Palava and Adani. Well? People of Wakanori do as Locomoco say. They not move. Soon, coffee corn die in fields. Fruit dry on vines. You're telling me. You see those nice, shiny instruments over there? Nadio? Well, they cost a lot of dough. They've come a long way. But they've got your gods beat eight different ways when it comes to telling them about the weather. What they tell you, Buona Rudek? That it ain't going to rain for a long, long time. But then I'll have every jewel, every valuable pelt, every nugget of gold and tusk of ivory that's worth hauling back to civilization. They'll be glad to trade with me in a few weeks. All of them have been so high and mighty. And then they decide they don't want to play ball with Emil Rudick and rot in this stinking jungle before I'll give them a bite of food or a drop of water. Now, in the crawl of the Wakanori, the signs of the coming famine became abundantly clear. The wild grasses on which the cattle had fed turned brown and useless. The coconuts became shrunken and distorted, and the riverbed was transformed into a pit of acrid dust. But still, the people of Wakanori tarried, for Lokomoko had returned from what he described as a journey to the home of the gods, with word that the deities had denied his petition that the tribe must remain in their village until a sign was given. How long must your people wait for this sign you speak of? Must we wait until all die? Lokimoko has given word of gods. We not move. Death to first man of Wakanori who departs from Kral. I cannot believe your gods have passed a death sentence on the entire Wakanori tribe. I shall be the first to leave. Let them strike me down if it is their will. The people of Wakanori remained, but the animals abandoned the arid land in a mighty wave that swept everything from its path. Tarzan sped northward, far above the brawling animals, but he suddenly came to an abrupt halt as he heard a sound that could have been emitted by only one creature. Hush, my small Papa. Manu will end your suffering. My blades will move fast, and you will feel no... Manu! What were you about to do? Tell me, husband of Manu, late you a tribe from village. But Kelny died. Others separated from Manu by animals. And Manu and Kitata are lost. Soon Kitata die from lack of milk. So... Kelny, dead. How, Manu? He would run head of others. Then suddenly he dropped. No sign on him. Not sick for that. I see. Manu, I, I shall take you back to the village. Then I shall get milk for your baby and return. Where does I get milk? From the trading post of Emil Rudek. <laughs> Okay, jungle man, step lively. There's plenty of others waiting. So I see. Hundreds of them herded together like cattle. Look, I don't have to take your smart talk. I got plenty of big men with big guns. Now, what'll it be? I want some milk. What you got to trade for it? A well-cured gorilla hide. One hide? <laughs> that wouldn't get you an eyedropper full. I might trade for that trinket you got on your wrist. Trinket? This bracelet contains an oriental pigeon's blood ruby. It was given to me by... I ain't interested in its history. Hmm. Not bad. Okay, here you are. 
You propose to trade this invaluable bracelet for one small can of powdered milk and that tiny flagon of water? I don't propose nothing. That's the deal. Now, you're holding up the line. Make up your mind quick. Take it or leave it. I'll take it. Here, Manu. Perhaps these may help. Mix them together, but give it to him sparingly. It may have to last for many days. Santa, Tarzan. Santa. Oh, Haligani. Benda Wakanari. People of village, much sick, hungry, thirsty. How much longer can you endure the false words of your witch doctor? Words of witch doctor are true. See what happened to Kilney, first man to go against word of gods? I examined what was left of his body. And although I can prove nothing, I believe he was not the victim of a god's anger, but of a man's poison. You make careful with words, Tarzan. I shall say nothing more for now. I'm more interested in the living. Do your gods still command you to sacrifice your entire tribe by staying here? No. Lokomoku have received signs. God say people pack everything of value. Pelts, gold, ivory, precious stone. Then take jungle trail to north by way trading post of Buana Rudek. And so the great migration began. A few of the natives yielded to temptation and Lokomoku's words and joined the long lines that sweltered outside of the trading post. But most of the tribe followed Tarzan up the tortuous trail that scaled the sheer palisades of the Miyazoris to Wajui Cabo, the Green Valley. This land of promise. So where is milk for Kitato? I will find some. The jungle provides everything. Water in nature, do it? The deal is pure. Oh, people of Wakinori are safe. Oh, water. It's good. Look, Tarzan. Look, Kiboku comes. Well, mighty witch doctor, did you learn the truth about your friend, Rudek? I come to save people from Tarzan's mistake. Mistake? Nidio, here you find fruits, berries, nuts, some game, but not last long. Soil full rocks, shale. Can never grow corn, plantain in Wajuikabo. Which doctor speaks truth, Tarzan? Tell people you make mistake, Tarzan. Tell them follow Lokomoko to trading post where white guana give them food, water. Yes, as long as they're valuable to last. And then what? Slavery? No, Lokomoku, I refuse to believe that your gods desire the people to yield to either you or Rudek. You see proof of God's anger that people hear your voice. Death will come to him who first drank of water from Lake of Miyazori. Manu, she reached the lake ahead of the others. And it was her baby who first tasted of its waters. <laughs> Manu to beware of the witch doctor, but beyond that he could do little. The baby was but one small person, and there were many lives at stake. Despite his exhausting search, however, Tarzan could find no answer to the great problem. This time, the jungle refused to supply their needs. He returned to the makeshift village disheartened. But as he did so, a strange sight met his eyes. Oh, I say there, men. You can start with lowering the equipment. Oh, Lloyd, you'd better move that tractor away from the edge of the cliff. It's taken too much effort hauling it up here to take a chance of losing it. Uh, Eggleton, uh, you better start your soil test at once. Greetings to you, city man. Oh, how do you do? It's just a trifle strange to find a white man's safari on top of a Congo mountain. Would you care to satisfy my curiosity and tell me the meaning of your presence and the reason for all this equipment? Oh, not at all. The name's Crichton, Leslie Crichton, head of the agriculture station, Becarata. Uh, we had word of your plight and we're here to do something about it, if it's safe. Possible. The jungle provides. Pardon? Nothing. I, I'm most happy to see you, sir. My name is Tarzan. 
And these unhappy people are of the Wakanori tribe. If you can, tell them how to make this soil fertile. Oh, I'm having young Edison make tests, but now that I've seen this land, I'm a bit skeptical. The lake furnishes a good source of water, and we brought seed and equipment along, but it's extremely doubtful if we can transform the share laden soil into fertile earth. You have dynamite with you, Mr. Creighton? We have some. Well, then if you cannot make fertile soil of the lake district, you must take the lake to fertile soil. Well, if it's possible that if we could blast the narrow gorge in just the right place, by Jove, I think you've struck on something. <laughs> Tarzan. Yes, my lord. Baby Mutsi. Baby Mutsi. Here, take this ground, Dakito Roof. And give it to him. Knowing that I could not keep my eye on the witch doctor all the time, I prepared this yesterday. It's, it's the jungle's most effective emetic. Had Kelney used it in time, he might have lived. Here, Kitoto. Take root of the kid to plant. Oh, take. Take. Kitoto must live. <laughs> Which doctor not put anything in milk of Kitoto? But you might have dropped a little of your voodoo medicine into the vessel that Manu used when she milked the ibex we've tamed. Not true. Tarzan make lies to turn people against me. And you commit murders to fulfill what you claim are the prophecies of your God. Tarzan, baby lives. Look, he smile now. He lives, but not because of Lokomoku. It not matter now that... Well, Carlson, you best get everyone back a bit. We've got that charge of dynamite right over there. We're about to let it fly. Everyone, get back. Oh, everyone. We get back. Move back, everyone. Lokomoku, that includes you. Don't worry, I'm not going to touch you. You needn't put your hands up. That bracelet on your wrist. It's mine. I find it. In Rudek's trading post where I left it. It's part of your payment like the gold I found in your tent. For agreeing to sell your people into slavery. Here, I've been to Wakanori. It's proof of your witch doctor's villainy. You not prove thing against Lokomoko. It's lies, lies, lies. Careful, careful, Lokomoko. You're running right into the path of lies. Justice of jungle. Well, we held one charge back, Carson, but we were too late to stop the other one. Well, it was not your fault. And had he lived, he would have been condemned. But you don't realize what's happened, man. With only the one charge going off, the gorge has been cut in the wrong place. We'll need a retaining wall of concrete to channel the water in the right direction. Then how would we ever get cement up here? You see that tremendous hill of ants? Well, of course I do, but... What it is... extends for miles, and the saliva of those ants makes a mortar stronger than any cement ever manufactured by man. You'll find when you know this land well enough that the jungle provides everything. Crazy. That's amazing, Carson. But I'm afraid there's still one missing element, one the jungle can't possibly provide... A retaining wall of that size would need reinforcing rods of strong metal. And without them, we'll... What in the name of thunder is he up to? Not to know. Look! Santo! Elephants by the droves, coming to him like a like a litter of friendly puppies. But that still doesn't explain what... the strange army of Tarzan, who had mounted a tremendous manor. Down the sheer precipices of Miyazore went the mighty legion, right to the garrison trading posts of Rudek. They smashed the foreman of barricade, trampled the men who trained guns on them. In vain did Amor Rudek try to marshal his demoralized army of thugs. And when in terror he finally attempted to escape, he ran into the path of a toppling hogshead, there to be drowned. By the very water he had denied the thirsty. And when the battle had been won, the elephants, under Tarzan's direction, demolished the fortress and uprooted the spiked iron fence, which they laboriously transported back to Wajui Kabo, the Green Valley. Why you bring iron fence, Tarzan? Why, it's obvious, Maru. 
You see before you the reinforcements for the concrete wall. And they'll fit the bill to a tea top. And the water of the lake will flow into the parched jungle? Oh, before too long. We have the missing element, all right, Tarzan. But uh, tell me, how in the devil did you ever conceive of such an idea? Well, for a long time now, I've been thinking that we've actually been fighting a sort of war with Rudek. And then suddenly I remembered something I'd read in the only book translated into every language in the world. It suggested to me that if swords could be beaten into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks, then a spike fence used in a war to deprive men of food might well be transformed into an instrument for peace and happiness. A frightened group of men threatened by death at the hands of savage beasts of the jungle. Defenseless animals killed by these men they seek to destroy. A small boy alone in a ghost city that's about to be demolished. And an angry Tarzan accused of being a spy. All of these in New Death, our next thrilling story of the Lord of the Jungle. Transcribed creation of the famous Edgar Rice Burroughs is produced by Walter White, Jr. Prepared for radio by Bud Lesser, with original music by Albert Glasser. This is a Commodore production.